happy love you by Friday. Friday. Two o'clock Greenwich Mean Time today. It is you, it is I. It is live Skype calls to the isolation station. Do you want to have a chat? Do you want to come and have a chat? Twitch.tv forward slash cultaholic if you do. It'd be lovely to see you there. But that's later on. For now, here is your wrestling news. A WWE Hall of Famer is returning at Survivor Series. Future AEW plans for Pac have been revealed. And a former WWE star is appearing on a game show. We'll talk about that in a bit. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard the Holy Moses, this doesn't age well. The Godfather is appearing at Survivor Series. So as you and I know, it is The Undertaker's final farewell at Survivor Series. Celebrating 30 years, they're going to give him a watch, kick him in the butt and say a computer took your place, daddy. So they're getting a few of Undertaker's mates to be a part of the show. We know Savio Vega is expected to be there and now we can add Charles Wright to the list as well. The Godfather is going to be on hand for the show as well. Uh, Undertaker, Godfather, Savio Vega, Yoko Zuda, Paul Bearer, Mr. Fuji. This sounds like the start of what happened to that wrestler. It's actually an assortment of some of the guys that used to knock about together backstage. The Bone Street crew, as they were called, was Undertaker's click in the locker room. So expect maybe a few other names uh, who are still with us who may be a part of the show as well. We also understand that Kane is expected to be there because if you're gonna do a final farewell for The Undertaker, you can't do it without his long lost brother who was burnt in a fire but wasn't burnt in a fire but took on a career as a diesel cosplayer and a dentist. You have to have him there, be foolish not to. So PW Insider confirming that Kane is set to be a part of this weekend as well. And they, along with others, have also reported that The Godfather is gonna be there too. It should be a fun evening for The Undertaker. In terms of what happens going forward, he was asked in an interview by the New York Post whether he entertain the idea of doing more cinematic wrestling matches. Are we going to get a Boneyard 2 electric bone galoo? Uh, apparently not. Uh, Undertaker said when asked about uh, doing more stuff uh, in the cinematic wrestling style, he wasn't massively keen on the idea. He said, it really doesn't appeal to me. Basically what it is, is working around my limitations. It's capitalizing on some of my ability and some of my creative ability to tell a story, but basically it's trying to mask some of the lack of my physical abilities at, the, at this point. I realized I have taken every physical gift tool that I have and I've used it all up. There is no water left in the sponge. If I can use that analogy, I wrung everything I could out of that sponge. <laughs> Undertaker, the sponge could take her. Not doing any more cinematic wrestling stuff. Uh, it does really feel like he's gonna be saying goodbye at Survivor Series. And we've had this so many times with Undertaker putting the hat on the floor and going, see you later, alligator. I feel like this is actually the time it's gonna happen. Big return took place on Wednesday as Pac stormed out onto the dynamite stage and went, oh, Eddie Kingston, I'm gonna get you, boy. <laughs> what? what accent is that? <laughs> Following an extended isolation in Geordieland, Pac is back at Daly's Place. Bodyslam.net have shed a little light on plans for Pac going forward. They say that the plan is gonna see Pac reuniting with the Lucha Brothers. The Death Triangle is back, baby. They barely got started, so they're gonna bring those guys back together. And then there'll be a program against Eddie Kingston, The Butcher, and The Blade. That seems like an appropriate way to do it. So uh, Eddie will, will lose control of Penta and Phoenix. Maybe they'll do a custody ladder match for them. And then we'll see some six-man tag team wars going down, which I'm very much for. Uh, in terms of what happens logistically for Pac going forward, um, Pac is slated to stay in the US through... In terms of what's going to happen logistically for Pac, so he is staying in America right now, so he can be a part of Dynamite and some TV tapings as well. And then the following week, he's going to fly back to the UK and he's set to return the just after Thanksgiving. There's still a bit of jiggery pokery when it comes to traveling between America and the UK. Uh, some long lockdown periods, long isolation periods when you come out the other side just to quarantine and 
and all that stuff. But they seem to be at a point where they feel like they can work with it and make something with it. So hence why Pack has returned. Last night, the NXT UK Heritage Cup Finals were set and it's gonna be Trent Seven versus A-Kid battling for that lovely shiny trophy. Uh, I've been enjoying the Heritage Cup stuff they've been doing and the tournament's been uh, a good way to to introduce that style to new audiences. Of course, it sort of it leans heavily into the classic world of sports style. And any American fans will know that Impact did something similar with the Grand Championship. So it's nice to see it back at the forefront. Definitely worth watching last night's NXT UK to see the finals of that. And also the debut of Rampage Brown, one of the finest UK independent wrestlers now a part of NXT UK. If you watch it for one thing, Watch the power slam he does on Jack Stars. It genuinely made my teeth rattle. The wrestling world has been showing their love to Melissa Coates this week. So you may remember Melissa Coates from OVW and from Deep South Wrestling, as she was also Super Genie, who accompanied Sabu to the ring for some matches. Uh, Melissa Coates had to undergo some emergency surgery this week that has led to her leg being amputated from the knee and a GoFundMe has been set up uh, to help cover some of the medical costs and costs going forward. Uh, the GoFundMe says, the super genie Melissa Coates is a trailblazer in the world of professional bodybuilding and pro wrestling. Throughout the 90s, she competed in the International Federation of Bodybuilding, placing highly in their Miss Olympia and Miss International events. Um, recently, Melissa was experiencing excruciating pain in her left leg. She was quickly admitted to the emergency department of the University Medical Center in Las Vegas. Doctors observed several artery blockages in her leg, and despite several procedures to save the leg, doctors unfortunately observed the blockages were spreading and the decision was made to amputate and save her life. We are therefore asking for any donations to help the super genie Melissa Coates during this difficult time. Any donation is greatly appreciated. We send our best wishes to Melissa Coates. And finally, we end on Leo Rush, who is going to be back on our TVs very soon, but not in a wrestling capacity. Now, Leo Rush is set to star on MTV's The Challenge, which if you're not familiar with MTV's The Challenge, it's a it's a bit like Double Dare meets I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. I think that's what I've gleaned from it. It's been running for 36 seasons, so they're obviously doing something right. Uh, so Leo Rush is set to be a part of MTV's The Challenge, and he is going for a share of $1 million against 29 other people. It's like a Royal Rumble. Uh, this is the 36th season of the show, which is madness, and it's called Double Agents. Uh, and it was filmed in Iceland, so you get a chance to hang out in Iceland at the same time as well. So, so if you if you know the challenge, then you will you'll know what the crack is here. And if you don't, certainly worth checking out. Expect some shenanigans from Leo Rush. If he doesn't hit a hurricane rana on a, on an Icelandic statue, I'll be deeply upset. Can you even hit a hurricane rana on a statue? It's been a long week. It's been a long week. <laughs> Love you by Friday from 2 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. It'll be flipping ace to see you there. Stay safe. Love you by.